You're listening to Audiology. Support our work on Patreon and be sure to submit your requests for topics in the comments below. The political party known as Fidesz, Hungarian Civic Alliance or just Fidesz for short, is a major player in Hungary's political landscape. It is led by Viktor Orban and leans towards right-wing populism and national conservatism. When Fidesz first started back in 1988, it was actually a group of young Democrats, the alliance of young Democrats, who were pushing back against the communist government of the time. It officially became a political party by 1990, with Orban at the helm. In the 1990 parliamentary election, they made their way into the National Assembly, yet they lost a bit of ground in the 1994 election. That's when some changes happened. The party shifted towards liberal conservatism, which didn't sit well with some members prompting them to leave. Fidesz started to get cosy with other conservative groups, and by the 1998 election, they were leading a centre-right government. The early 2000s saw them embrace nationalism, though they weren't immune to slipping popularity because of some corruption issues. Fidesz was in the opposition from 2002 to 2010, and they even joined forces with the Christian Democratic People's Party along the way. Their big comeback was thanks, in part, to the Ossod speech that sparked widespread protests. This led to a landslide win in the 2010 election, where they secured a supermajority. Once back in power, the party doubled down on national conservative ideals and started to take a more skeptical view of the European Union. In 2011, they pushed through a new constitution for Hungary that kicked in the following year, but it wasn't without its critics, who felt it gave Fidesz too much control. They kept their strong majority in the 2014 elections and, amid the migrant crisis, began speaking with a right-wing populist and anti-immigrant tone. Over the years, Fidesz has really transformed, now sitting firmly on the right, with many political experts labelling their style of governance as leaning towards the illiberal or authoritarian. Orban himself calls it a Christian illiberal democracy. As of the latest Hungarian parliamentary election in 2022, Fidesz still holds the majority, with 135 seats in the National Assembly. And they're no strangers to presidential power. Every president since 2000 came with their endorsement, and they've had the presidency themselves since 2010. Fidesz even dominates all 19 county assemblies, but faces opposition in Budapest's General Assembly. Their international affiliations have shifted as well. They were part of the Liberal International until 2000, then they joined the European People's Party, only to leave in 2021. These days, you'll find them grouped with the non-inscripts in the European Parliament. Liberal Activist Beginnings, 1988 to 1989. The Alliance of Young Democrats, known by its Hungarian acronym Fides, was established in 1988 during spring. Starting as an underground liberal student movement, it stood against the Hungarian Socialist Workers' Party, which was in power at the time. It was somewhat risky to create such a movement as it was semi-illegal, so the founders were taking a big chance with their careers by opposing the government. Initially, you could only be part of Fides if you were under 35, but this rule was dropped in 1993. The party was honoured with the Rafto Prize in 1989, and its representative at the ceremony was Peter Molnar, who later became a member of the Hungarian parliament. Centre-left opposition and conservative shift, 1990 to 1998. By the 1990 elections, Fidesz had made its way into the National Assembly with around 6% of the vote. It was quite popular as a smaller opposition party. Joining Liberal International in 1992, the party was seen as a moderate liberal centrist group. But by 1993, there was a big change, the party moved from a liberal stance to a civic centrist position, which led to a split within its ranks. Notably, Peter Molnar and others left to join the Alliance of Free Democrats. The leadership then went to Viktor Orban. After a disappointing performance in the 1994 elections, the party maintained its opposition role but leaned more towards conservatism. It was renamed the Hungarian Civic Party in 1995 and began forming connections with other conservative groups. First Orban government, 1998 to 2002. Come the 1998 elections, Fidesz took control for the first time with Viktor Orban appointed as the prime minister. They aligned with the Hungarian Democratic Forum and the Independent Smallholders Party. A couple of years later, in 2000, Fidesz left the Liberal International and joined the European People's Party. 
this government was seen as a fairly typical conservative rule within Europe. Return to Opposition, 2002 to 2010. After just narrowly losing to the Hungarian Socialist Party in the 2002 elections, Fidesz claimed there was electoral fraud. Despite losing, Fidesz remained influential, winning majorities in many local governments in the 2003 municipal elections and claimed success again in the 2004 European parliamentary elections. They also backed Laszlo Soljom for president in 2005, who won. However, they couldn't clinch a win in the 2006 national elections. Fidesz paired up with the Christian Democratic People's Party for this election. After winning local elections in the same year, Fidesz experienced a landslide win in the 2009 European Parliament election. There were also discussions within the party, led by Orban, about creating a long-term stable political environment. In 2010, aiming for a significant majority in the upcoming parliamentary elections seemed possible, despite the rise of a nationalist party. In power, 2010 to present. Since 2010, Fidesz has benefited from the lack of a strong unified opposition. Under their administration, Hungary has seen a decrease in government debt, an improvement in economic indicators, and a significant drop in unemployment. However, there has been criticism about the nature of work generated through public works programs and Hungary's dependency on European Union funds. Second Orban government, 2010 to 2014. In 2010, Fidesz Seed achieved a major victory, gaining a two-thirds majority in parliament, public dissatisfaction with the previous government's approach to economic issues, and a scandal involving the Prime Minister lying set the stage for this win. With their newfound power, Fidesz Z enacted a slew of laws and drafted a new constitution. This new constitution faced significant criticism for consolidating power in the hands of the ruling party. Third Orban government, 2014 to 2018. In the 2014 elections, Fidesz maintained its dominance with another supermajority, though they lost this edge with subsequent by-elections. Fourth Orban government, 2018 to 2022. Fidesz secured another supermajority in 2018, campaigning on immigration and foreign influence, which underlined a populist trend in Europe. There were controversies like the relocation of the Prime Minister's residence and losses in the 2019 local elections. Fifth Orban government, 2022 to present. Again, in 2022, Fidesz achieved a commanding victory and held its supermajority in the legislature, with Reuters describing it as a crushing victory. This was the highest vote share for any party since Hungary's return to democracy in 1989. The political journey of Hungary's Fidesz party has seen quite a transformation. Starting as a centre-left student movement advocating liberalism and anti-clerical policies in the late 80s, Fidesz has steadily moved rightward, becoming the key liberal conservative force by 1998. In the 2000s, they embraced nationalism along with a centre-right identity, while also showing Christian democratic leanings. Today, Fidesz stands as a right-wing party, favouring national conservatism, and taking a strong stance on economic intervention in matters like banking. Their social policies are conservative, they are moderately Eurosceptic, and have been labelled as right-wing populist. There have been claims that Fidesz has adopted far-right practices and been called out for leaning toward authoritarianism. However, Fidesz rejects these labels, countering that such criticism is a reaction to its immigration and democracy policies. Regarding their vision of democracy, the party, especially through its leader, Viktor Orban, has touted the concept of a Christian illiberal democracy. Orban criticizes liberal democracy as intolerant and incompatible with Christian values, citing Turkey, Russia, China and Singapore as successful non-liberal models. When it comes to economic policies, Fidesz shows skepticism towards neoliberalism, contrasting the Hungarian left, which tends to favour these policies. Fidesz has enacted both liberal economic reforms, like tax cuts and interventionist schemes such as job programmes and utility bill cuts. They stress the importance of national control over key sectors while approaching globalisation with caution. In foreign policy, Hungary under Fidesz had complex interactions. They refused an on-the-ground military involvement in Serbia during the Kosovo conflict, but did allow the North Atlantic Treaty Organization airspace. 
The party opposed the Iraq invasion in 2003 based on international law concerns. They have had sharp disagreements with the European Union over several issues, despite Orban's maneuvers to keep Fidesz within mainstream European conservative circles. Tensions with Ukraine arose over the treatment of the Hungarian minority, leading to Hungary's resistance to Ukraine's Western integration efforts, despite other forms of support. Fidesz has been criticized for an increasingly cozy relationship with Russia, though it aligned with NATO and EU stances, in condemning the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, offering humanitarian aid but not military support. Fidesz has taken a strong anti-immigration position, though it has also welcomed foreign workers to address labor shortages. Orban has spoken out against diversity and favored ethnic homogeneity, taking legal steps to prevent the settlement of non-Hungarian populations and incentivizing Hungarian families to have more children as a demographic strategy. Socially, Fidesz has empowered citizens with the right to bear arms for self-defense on private property and criminalized homelessness. While Orban's rhetoric stresses Christian democracy, some policies, such as state-provided in vitro fertilization treatments, have drawn criticism from sectors of the Christian community. Anti-communism is a fundamental stance of Fidesz, which has removed monuments commemorating communist figures and criticized celebrations of Karl Marx. Their political communication often includes controversial campaigns like anti-George Soros posters and questionnaires with leading questions to promote their agenda, funded by taxpayer money. This strategy has drawn accusations of anti-Semitism and manipulation. The governing party in Hungary, Fidesz, has come under fire for what many say are actions that go against democratic principles. Critics point to a variety of issues such as serious restrictions on the freedom of the press, undermining the court's independence, taking over independent institutions and non-governmental organizations, spying on political rivals, manipulating elections and attacking non-governmental organizations that critique them. There are also allegations of Fidesz engaging in favoritism and corruption, expressing anti-Semitic sentiments and passing laws that harm the rights of lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender individuals. These controversial moves have led to several clashes with the European Union. Fidesz has been specifically accused of gradually dismantling Hungary's democracy, including reducing the independence of the judiciary, seizing control over both state and private media and altering the electoral system to benefit the party. Observers have said that Fidesz's actions have set a dangerous example, which could undermine democratic institutions in other countries, with Poland noted as an example, and could inspire far-right politicians across Europe and even in Brazil. It's reached a point where experts find it hard to agree if Hungary can still be considered a democracy. The Bertelsmann Foundation, a respected German research institution, has even suggested that Hungary is on a path toward autocracy under the influence of Fidesz. Some have compared Fidesz's style of governance to that of communist Hungary during the era when it was led by Janos Kadar. However, members of Fidesz counter these claims, arguing that the party is just offering a different model of democracy, one that isn't based on the liberal democracy template. The government of Hungary, led by Fidesz, has come under criticism for controlling the media in the country. Critics claim that Fidesz has essentially silenced alternative political voices by influencing major news outlets, which has created an information bubble that favors the government. The administration has been accused of economically suffocating media that are not loyal by withholding government advertising money, significant because the government is known to be the second largest advertiser in Hungary. In addition, there is pressure on media company owners who are either forced to align with the government's narrative or risk their other businesses being targeted. By the year 2018, over 500 news organizations reportedly supported the government, which is a significant increase from just 31 in 2015. A Hungarian scholar has indicated that by the year 2017, state entities or those affiliated with Fidesz owned a staggering 90% of Hungarian media, including all regional newspapers. Prime Minister Viktor Orban has mentioned how he believes the liberal media contributed to Fidesz's electoral defeat in the year 2002. After this event, he began a mission to transform the media landscape in Hungary by encouraging loyalists to purchase media entities and synchronize news coverage. 
These government-friendly media outlets allegedly adhere to preset news themes for their daily reports. In 2010, shortly after Orban assumed power, he passed laws that gave him authority over appointments for the country's primary media regulatory bodies. He also expanded their power. These bodies were then able to impose substantial fines on media organizations for unbalanced coverage or content that offends human dignity or common morals. This action was met with intense criticism from the European community. Furthermore, journalists working in public media are required to promote a national identity in their reporting. Hungarian state media is seen as completely in line with the Orban government. New administrators, regarded as propagandists by certain staff members, have been introduced to Hungarian public radio since Fidesz came to power. Staff members in public broadcasting have experienced significant changes including a reduction in the workforce and strict guidelines about reporting on specific topics. There have also been reports of state media refusing to cover anti-government protests. Club Radio, an independent radio station not aligned with the government, found itself systematically deprived of its broadcasting frequencies and in the year 2021 had its license revoked by Hungary's Media Council, which is composed of government supporters. Even though Club Radio failed to submit paperwork in time, a problem other broadcasters also experienced without repercussions, their request to have their frequency reinstated was denied by the Council. The European Commission has indicated that it may pursue legal action against Hungary over the denial of Club Radio's license. Népszabad Sag, Hungary's largest circulation newspaper, was closed shortly after it reported on a luxurious trip taken by Antal Rogan, a well-known ally of Fidesz. Following Fidesz's electoral victory in 2018, Magyar Nemzet, a daily newspaper critical of the government and its affiliated radio station, announced they were shutting down, partly due to a boycott of government advertisements. Here TV, which was part of the same media group, was turned into a pro-government channel. Jorigo, previously a well-known news website that was friendly to the opposition, altered its editorial stance to pro-government after a series of transactions that saw individuals close to the governing party take control. This transformation was viewed as a significant loss for press independence in Hungary. The progression of Arrigo's change intensified in 2014 when its editor-in-chief was dismissed following investigations into a senior Fidesz official's expenses, an action that prompted several journalists to resign in protest. In a notable development, over 400 private media organizations were consolidated under the Central European Press and Media Foundation, which is managed by figures associated with the government. Although this move formalized an already prevalent support for the government within these outlets, it was unprecedented within the European Union. Journalists face hurdles when covering immigration as they require government permits to report from areas near national borders, face restrictions on access to refugee centers, have their footage forcibly deleted and encounter physical confrontations or damage to their equipment. Pro-government media is notorious for attacking critics of the government. This includes negative portrayals of opposition politicians and public figures who express dissent. In July of 2021, investigations revealed that the Hungarian government seemed to have employed Pegasus spyware to monitor journalists as well as business individuals tied to the media. Hungarian diplomats stationed in Europe have been caught gathering information about Hungarian journalists' international travel and sharing it with the home government. This is purportedly an effort to track left-wing journalists, trained by organizations funded by George Soros. There was a diplomatic dispute between Slovenia and Hungary regarding press freedom when a Slovenian magazine, Mladina, depicted Orban in a cartoon featuring Nazi symbols. Hungary's ambassador condemned the portrayal but Mladina replied with satire. When Hungary's embassy in Slovenia requested help to prevent such depictions, Slovenia's foreign ministry stood by the principles of free speech and press freedom and refused to take action. This request was widely regarded by Slovenian officials, diplomats and media scholars as inappropriate in diplomatic relations. The Hungarian government, led by the Fidesz party, has come under criticism for a series of actions that critics claim undermine judicial independence. Reports indicate that the government has staffed the constitutional and judicial bodies with individuals loyal to them, replacing impartial judges. 
Even a former Fidesz member, known for not pursuing Fidesz politicians for corruption, was appointed as the chief prosecutor. In the year 2011, there was a controversial decision to reduce the mandatory retirement age for judges from 70 to 62. This decision forced many judges into retirement, creating vacancies that the government promptly filled. Following that, in 2012 there were objections because the government was accused of granting too much authority to a single individual, the head of the National Judicial Office, a role that was newly established. A significant incident occurred in 2018 when Tunde Hando, who had strong personal connections to Prime Minister Orban and the Fidesz party, was alleged by a group of eminent judges to have manipulated the appointment process for high-ranking judges. Efforts were made to prevent the judges' counsel from convening, likely to hinder the publication of their critical report. During this period, there were also multiple resignations among judges, which led to increased concerns. The circumstances involving the Constitutional Court are also concerning. The Fidesz-led government eliminated a nomination committee that previously included members from all parliamentary parties and took over the process of nominating judges. They also expanded the number of judges on the court, allowing for the addition of more individuals aligned with their party. After eight years in governance, every constitutional court judge was assigned by Fides, and the court's rulings often conformed with the government's agenda. Whenever the court declared a law unconstitutional, the Fides-dominated parliament would simply amend the constitution. The government's actions did not end there. They established what is being referred to as a parallel court system, that oversees public administration matters. Opponents are worried that this arrangement enables the government to manage contentious reforms and measures, such as dismissing legal challenges to governmental decisions or blocking corruption investigations. Nonetheless, the government justifies these measures by claiming the reforms are intended to enhance judicial independence and efficiency, aligning with European and international norms. After the communist regime came to an end, Hungary established certain institutions with the goal of keeping a vigilant eye on the government. These include the State Audit Office, the State Prosecution Service and the National Fiscal Council. However, the current Fidesz government has been placing former members of its own party in charge of these organizations which are meant to be unbiased and independent. The independence of Hungary's central bank also became a concern back in 2011. That year, the government proposed new laws that, according to Andras Simor, who was leading the central bank at the time, might threaten the bank's ability to operate freely without political interference. Mario Draghi, the European Central Bank president, also voiced criticism regarding these changes. As the reform sparked controversy, officials from the International Monetary Fund and the European Commission decided to step away from talks about assisting Hungary, which was struggling with a significant amount of debt. Later on, a person loyal to the ruling Fidesz party was appointed to head the central bank. Since coming into power in 2010, with a dominant majority that lets them set and pass laws with ease, Fidesz has regularly not given Parliament enough time to properly consider new laws. In some cases, they have only informed lawmakers about the coming debates a few hours in advance, and then only allowed a few hours for those debates to take place. Additionally, it has been common for the laws to be brought forward by lower-level legislators who have not actually written or even read the bills they are presenting. From 1990 to 2010, Hungary's National Assembly had a bit of a complicated method for deciding its 386 members. They would use a mixture of systems. Some seats were picked through a two-round process in individual districts. Others were chosen with a one-shot regional list that was proportional and additional seats were given out based on the leftover votes from the first two groups. Because of this setup, which aligns with what's called Duverger's law, we ended up seeing more parties take a stand and Fidesz emerged as the main party on the right. Come 2010, Fidesz really took the stage, seizing a two-thirds supermajority while only actually getting half of the popular vote thanks in part to their scattered opposition. Upon gaining power, the Fidesz-dominated government revamped the election process and halved the parliamentary seats to 199. Now, about 50% of those seats are decided by who gets the most votes in each larger district, while the rest are filled by looking at party representation at the national level. This new system, which has been used since 2014, benefits parties that stick together, a strategy that's worked well for Fidesz as their opponents remain divided. 
However, recognizing the challenge, the left-leaning parties and Jobbik teamed up for the 2022 elections in response. There's been some controversy around new rules that make it easy to set up political parties. This led to an increase in what many call fake parties that only serve to split the vote further, making it harder for any real challengers to Fidesz's rule. Some suggest that Fidesz candidates may even be encouraging these decoys. Then there's the situation with Hungarians living outside the country. In 2010, a law was passed that made it much simpler for ethnic Hungarians abroad to become citizens. Now about 10% of voters are from this group and an overwhelming 95% of them back Fidesz. Other state media has also been pulled into this, accused of showing favoritism by giving space to Fidesz for advertisements, but not to the opposition. Finally, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, who keeps an eye on elections, has called out Fidesz for not playing fair. They say the party has been using government perks to boost their campaign, making it difficult to tell where the government ends and the party begins. The organization also pointed out issues with media favoritism and unclear campaign spending, concluding that although the 2018 parliamentary election was carried out freely, it wasn't entirely fair. Let's talk about Black Cube first. Back in 2018, they were involved in supporting Viktor Orban's campaign to get re-elected. They managed to get their hands on recorded phone calls from people who were working with George Soros. Now Soros, he didn't want Orban re-elected. Tamar Zandberg spoke out on this, saying Hungary was attacking Soros with an anti-Semitic campaign. She also pointed out that Benjamin Netanyahu, whose political party Likud is said to have links with far-right European parties, was backing Orban's campaign, which she found troubling. Zandberg believed that Black Cube's support for Orban reflected poorly on Israel. Moving on to Pegasus, the Hungarian government, led by Viktor Orban, authorized the use of this spyware by their intelligence and law enforcement agencies. It has been reported that they targeted their political adversaries with it. In July 2021, reports emerged showing signs that journalists, media bosses and others were under surveillance by the Hungarian government using Pegasus. We're talking about phone numbers belonging to at least 10 lawyers, five or more journalists, and an opposition politician ending up on a list of potential targets for Pegasus spying. By November 2021, Lajos Kosa, who is in charge of a parliamentary defence and law enforcement committee, came forward as the first high-ranking Hungarian official to confirm that the Interior Ministry purchased and utilised Pegasus. Kosa defended the action, claiming he saw nothing wrong with it. He compared it to large tech companies, which he believes monitor people much more than the Hungarian state. The Hungarian government, led by Prime Minister Viktor Orban and his Fidesz party, is facing allegations of infringing on the freedoms of civil society. Critics suggest that the government's tough stance on non-governmental organizations or NGOs is undermining the checks and balances essential to democracy, particularly when these groups are the principal opposition to Orban's policies. The government's negative attention often targets George Soros, a financier born in Hungary. He has been accused by Fidesz of attempting to dilute Hungarian and European values by secretly promoting mass immigration through NGOs. Because of increasing hostility from the government, the Open Society Foundations, established by Soros, relocated from Budapest to Berlin in 2018. Moreover, a bill widely believed to target the Soros-funded Central European University compelled the university to cease its Budapest operations due to what is widely considered to be limitations on academic freedom. The National Cooperation Fund, headed by Laszlo Cismadia, a Fidesz advocate, appears to prefer organizations that uphold religious and nationalist objectives. Cismadia asserts that NGOs should preserve national identity and Christian values. Consequently, NGOs that do not align with the government's views are forced to seek financial aid from abroad, including the Norwegian government and the Open Society Foundation. Some of these organizations have been raided by the Hungarian government, who accuses them of foreign influence. Prime Minister Orban is even reported to have labeled these NGOs as foreign-funded enemies of the state and has expressed an intention to eliminate them. Concerning foreign donations, Hungarian law now imposes stringent rules on NGOs, compelling them to register and publicly declare foreign funding, leading to fines and the possibility of shutdown. In 2018, the Stop Soros law was enacted, levying financial penalties on NGOs supporting what the government deems illegal migration. 
This law even makes assisting asylum seekers a criminal act, placing activists, lawyers, and NGO workers at risk of incarceration. Organizations like the United Nations and Amnesty International have widely condemned the law. The promotion of Hungarian nationalism is also apparent in the education system. The government is pushing educators to incorporate a certain perspective in textbooks, denoting that multiculturalism is a problem. The new Hungarian constitution, having faced criticism for potentially discriminating against religious minorities, is included in the high school syllabus. The independence of universities is in jeopardy as the government transitions the control of funding to its nominees, aiming to shape these institutions to be more national and Christian. A law proposed in 2021 intends to hand control of state universities to foundations governed by Orban-aligned nationalists. Critics interpret this as a strategy to fortify Fidesz's hold over universities, regardless of future electoral outcomes. Artistic institutions and universities are not exempt from the political influence of Fidesz. The government has a role in appointing directors of theatre productions that favour Hungarian values and the concept of a nation-state. Additionally, an agency has been established to honour artists who exhibit dedication to nationalist themes. Andras Pati, a professor who once presided over a Fidesz-founded university, suggests that employing a democratic mandate to reform society is a typical endeavour among leaders in democratic nations indicating that the actions of the Hungarian government are not unique. Religious entities that have critiqued the government are reported to have been selectively omitted from lawful recognition and financial support, which is generally provided through government subsidies. Even though the European Court of Human Rights found this to be an infringement on religious liberty in 2014, the Hungarian government has not made significant adjustments, citing problems with cooperation from the opposition. The government led by the Fidesz party in Hungary has faced numerous corruption allegations, including claims that it has been supporting a circle of wealthy allies. According to the World Bank, Hungary's position on the corruption scale has gotten worse, contrasting with improvements seen elsewhere in the region. The European Union's anti-fraud office has started several investigations into the misuse of European Union money involving figures close to Prime Minister Viktor Orban like his son-in-law's business. There are also claims that the government punishes business people who don't support them by imposing harsh taxes and rules. One Hungarian economist has labelled the government's economic tactics as authoritarian capitalism. Some experts, both from Hungary and internationally, have even referred to Hungary since 2010 as a kleptocracy, which means a government with corrupt leaders exploiting the country's resources and committing theft. In the first six years with Fidesz in power, about 5% of all the contracts the government awarded, worth around $2.5 billion, went to just five individuals close to Orban. Moreover, there have been allegations of the government directing billions in European Union and federal funding to friends and family and ceasing these profitable deals for anyone who no longer supports the party. Let's discuss some concerning actions and comments regarding anti-Semitism by the political party Fidesz in Hungary. The party Fidesz has faced criticism for honouring figures with anti-Semitic pasts. For example, in 2012 some prominent members of the party unveiled a statue in Budapest of Cécile Tormé, known for her support of Adolf Hitler. Even the mayor of Budapest at that time, Istvan Tarlos from Fidesz, was involved although he halted plans to name a street after Tormé due to international backlash. The party also supports attempts to redeem Miklos Horthy, a controversial figure from Hungary's history associated with World War II. Turning to another sensitive subject, Fidesz has frequently targeted George Soros, a Hungarian-American Jewish billionaire. They've accused him of planning to overwhelm Hungary with refugees, using language that's often seen as anti-Semitic. Prime Minister Viktor Orban once described Soros in quite harsh terms, painting him as an enemy of Hungary's values. A 2019 report by the Holocaust Remembrance Project singled out Hungary for trying to downplay its role in the Holocaust. This included rehabilitating war criminals and introducing anti-Semitic writers into school curriculums. The Fidesz government's actions were described as playing a dangerous game with history. Fidesz politicians themselves have made outright anti-Semitic remarks. Back in 2008, founding party member Zolt Bayer published comments in a newspaper that openly justified anti-Semitism. Despite protests from over a hundred Hungarian intellectuals, the matter wasn't forcefully addressed by the party. 
Again in 2009, a Fidesz member of parliament made a claim on television about Jewish conspiracies against Hungary, which the party did not formally denounce. Other examples over the years include elected officials making offensive statements about Jews and Jewish politicians, with some apologies offered, but little action taken. Switching to the topic of immigration, Hungary's treatment of this issue has brought international concern. The government has been criticized by the European Court of Human Rights for leaving asylum seekers in detention without food. Plus, a law dubbed Stop Soros, aimed at curbing support for illegal immigration, has been condemned for being so broad that it could criminalize basic humanitarian help. Despite the government's anti-immigration stance, driven by what some claim is politics rather than reality, Hungary has seen an increase in economic migration. This has raised concerns among Hungarian workers that foreign labor could drive down wages. Finally, let's touch on LGBT rights. In 2021, a law was passed in Hungary that had some controversial provisions. It prohibits showing LGBT content to minors in media and education and restricts literature on LGBT topics being sold near schools or churches. The law was met with significant pushback from leaders across the European Union, even leading to a joint statement from 17 countries. The President of the European Commission denounced it, highlighting potential human rights violations. Fadis generally holds a stance known as soft Euroscepticism, which means they support some European Union policies, but are critical of others. Prime Minister Viktor Orban is known for occasionally clashing with European Union institutions and has even described his approach to dealing with them as the dance of the peacock. This means he's been able to introduce controversial policies without facing significant repercussions, much to his supporters' delight. In September 2018, the European Parliament took a bold step to limit Hungary's influence within the European Union. They voted to suspend Hungary's voting rights, arguing that the country was not upholding democratic principles and the core values of the European Union. However, Poland promised to block these sanctions right after the vote. If carried through, this process could lead to Hungary losing its European Union voting rights. This was a historic first in the European Union's efforts to discipline a member state. The European Parliament based their decision on a report that outlined alleged democratic violations in Hungary, including undermining media diversity, targeting civil organizations, and restricting academic freedom. Hungary's government officials didn't take the vote lightly, with Foreign Minister Peter Sijato calling the accusations in the report a collection of qualified lies. They questioned the voting method, claiming it breached normal rules because abstention votes were not counted, which they believe is the only reason the necessary two-thirds majority was met. Orban's government has also made waves by suggesting the reintroduction of the death penalty in Hungary. This stance is at odds with European Union regulations, which ban the death penalty in all member states. Additionally, there's been ongoing tension regarding how Hungary has handled the European migrant crisis. Fidesz has not just been in conflict with the wider European Union, but also within its own political family, the European People's Party. After receiving calls from 12 member parties to get rid of Fidesz, the party's membership was put on hold by mutual agreement, and Orban has hinted that they might just leave the European People's Party on their own accord. Lastly, Fidesz launched a controversial ad campaign suggesting that European Union immigration policies were influenced by George Soros, portrayed alongside the then European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker in advertisements, with a message about the European Union planning compulsory relocation quotas. The leader of the European People's Party was not happy, demanding an apology from Orban and a retraction of the criticisms made against the European Union, or else risking Fidesz's suspension from the group. In 2014, when the government unveiled plans to tax online data usage, it didn't go down well. A whopping crowd of nearly 100,000 people showed up across different protests to say they weren't having it. This strong backlash made the government think twice, and they cut down the proposed tax rates. But that didn't cool things off. People kept showing their displeasure. On top of that, the European Commission chimed in, pointing out problems with how the tax was structured. In the end, the government had no choice but to toss the whole tax plan out the window. Now let's talk about work hours. In late 2018, the government decided to shake things up with overtime rules. They said, let's bump up the maximum overtime from 250 hours to 400 hours and give companies up to three years to pay up for that extra time. Sometimes workers might just get their normal pay rate for working overtime. 
Why all these changes, you ask? Well, the country was short on workers, and they figured this would help businesses struggling to find people. But here's the kicker. Not everybody was happy. Actually, lots of folks were pretty upset. They started calling the changed rules the slave law, which isn't exactly a term of endearment. The government stands by these changes, arguing they're needed to prop up businesses that can't find enough staff. In fact, Hungary's unemployment rate has dipped to a low 3.7%, while the number of empty job spots has climbed quite a bit. The riff over the so-called slave law grew into something bigger, opposing the government's style and actions on the whole. Political parties that usually don't see eye to eye joined the protests in unity. Even though the biggest turnout was about 15,000, it's been one of the most noticeable public pushbacks against the Fidesz government. However, don't expect the government to admit that these protests are the talk of the town. A government spokesperson has outright denied that the demonstrations are a big deal. Let's talk about Fidelitas, the youth group linked to the Fidesz party. This organization got its start back in 1996, Fast forward to December 2022, and there's been a change in leadership. Daniel Farkas took over as the president, taking the reins from Boglarka Iles. It's also worth noting that Fidelitas is part of a bigger picture. They're connected to the European Democrat Students, also known as EDS, and they're a part of the International Young Democrat Union too. Let's talk about Fidesz, the Hungarian political party. They have been a part of several international groups, like the International Democratic Union and the Centrist Democrat International. Although they started out with a liberal stance, joining the Liberal International from 1992 to 2000, they shifted towards conservatism and found a new home with the European People's Party at the European Union level. However, the relationship encountered issues leading to their suspension from the European People's Party on March 20, 2019. They permanently left on March 3, 2021, after the European People's Party changed its rules and could have ejected Fidesz's delegation. Nowadays, the Fidesz members of the European Parliament associate with the non-inscripts group in the European Parliament. Now let's take a quick tour around Europe to see with whom Fidesz has been forming connections. In Austria, Fidesz and the Freedom Party of Austria share similar values and perspectives. Prime Minister Viktor Orban even expressed support for them in their 2019 election. In Belgium, Hungary's Justice Minister attended a rally with the Vlaams Belang Party in June 2022, acting as a notable guest speaker. The Czech Republic has seen Orban sending supportive letters and endorsements generously, from backing a new political movement to supporting the Czech Prime Minister during his campaign. In Croatia, Orban supported the leader of the Croatian Democratic Union due to their common viewpoint on immigration. France is noteworthy. Orban was not initially a supporter of Marine Le Pen, but eventually warmed up to her national rally party, even offering her his endorsement. Germany presents a divergence for Fidesz, they do not align with the alternative for Germany party, preferring their sister parties, the Christian Democratic Union and Christian Social Union instead. Italy has Orban's endorsement as well. He has publicly appreciated former Italian Interior Minister Matteo Salvini and the League. In North Macedonia, the revelation that a politician seeking asylum in Hungary had connections to Fidesz caused considerable drama. The relationship between Poland and Hungary was close, sharing several political ideologies. Nonetheless, their rapport experienced fluctuations due to divergent perspectives on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Serbia maintains amicable ties with Hungary, with Orban supporting the Serbian president and Hungarian firms benefiting from Serbian contracts. Slovenia witnessed Orban campaigning for their prime minister and even participating in a conference call with the United States President Trump. Slovakia had Fidesz providing campaign consultants and sharing commendations with local political groups. Generally speaking, Orban has been extending his network across Europe, forging alliances with numerous right-wing leaders and political organizations. Beyond the European borders, Netanyahu's Israel discovered an ally in Orban, even amidst criticism over Orban's controversial historical viewpoints. They have supported each other in various challenging situations. Then there's the United States, where Orban was among the first European leaders to express his support for Trump. Trump reciprocated by commending Orban's stringent immigration policies. Throughout these international interactions, political parties that represent Hungarian minorities in neighboring nations often align with Fidesz. 
They have collaborated in European Parliament elections and maintain a close partnership with each other and with other parties within the European People's Party. Thanks for watching. Share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe for more content.